It will not stop the protests because the protests are quite unorganized grassroots protests. Uh, Lukashenko uh, did a great job, under quotation marks, uh, to suppress uh, organization of any opposition movements in the past. And that, of course, now makes it more difficult to suppress protests who are, uh, don't have a clear leader, who are very much about regional self-organization, so not only going on in the capital. Uh, but this kind of chopping off the leaders or the perceived leaders of the protests uh, has been the tactic Lukashenko applies since two weeks now. He's really resisting that pressure coming from the streets to, to resign or to even hold uh, elections again. What is it that um, makes him so confident? I mean, what's maintaining him in power? Is it support from, from the military? Is it support from other countries? Both. So uh, he still has the support of the security forces, uh, the military, but predominantly the police forces and the KGB, which is the secret service, still called KGB in Belarus. Uh, he has the support of Russia, and there has have been intensive negotiations between Moscow and Minsk in the past weeks, and it came out that Russia will not support any kind of transition without Lukashenko or uh, replacing him, at least for now. Uh, and he is betting on that this support uh, and uh, harsh repression from the security forces will outlast the protesters. So he bets on that, given the level of repression, they will sooner or later uh, lose interest in going to the streets, things will be quiet, and then he's in power again. Well, he has been in power for 26 years, and he has been surrounded by yes sales all the time. So the idea of uh, declining the offer of him staying on seems uh, unthinkable for him, and he lives now in quite in his world on his own, unfortunately. OK, so he can count on the support of Russia, but what is that costing Lukashenko? What are Russians asking for in return, do you think? Uh, first is the constitutional reform, as they call it. This will be an exercise that is behind the scenes uh, instigated by Russia. The second thing is, of course, deep integration into the union state, a common currency, uh, co common training, education for civil servants, even uh, common employment schemes have been discussed. So uh, Belarus will de facto sink into being uh, a Russian oblast. On the military sphere, of course, this offers uh, the use of Belarusian territory to a much greater extent than Russia was allowed to do so in the past. Uh, the, the integration in terms of security forces and military forces will, of course, continue, and hence Russia can have a foothold further more west, um, uh, deeper into, into NATO's open flank on the east. And of course, uh, to pressure Ukraine, uh, cutting off that border or threatening from that border is far more easier than in the past when Lukashenko tried to be, uh, to stay clear of all of these attempts to either pressure the Europeans or pressure, pressure Ukraine. So considering all of this then and the potential shift of the balance of power, um, shouldn't the EU be doing more in response? I mean, it says it's planning sanctions. Yes, the EU, unfortunately, is always one or two weeks behind the curve. So what they are planning now would have been good if they have done so two weeks ago. Now we have a more internationalized situation due to the uh, Latin Russian support and the forthcoming Russian support on, on the security sector. Uh, and here, especially NATO should be called upon. I mean, uh, so far, Lukashenko always stuck to arms control agreements and the Vienna document being transparent. If the Russians get new military bases and extract Belarus as well from the sort of sphere of transparency, this will change the balance of forces on NATO's eastern flank. Uh, and at least now that the Russians uh, should be made aware that this should have consequences and they should not do so unpunished and that uh, uh, NATO will or should reinforce their troops. Such a threat is probably one of the few things the Russians might listen to at this moment. Uh, and, and even though of course, Europe would not like to execute such a thing. Uh, one uh, should at least start to talk about it to make the Russians aware that they cannot do as they please.